for all you uh, advanced users, please download download this packet here um, before, before I get started. That has some extra goodies just for you. Um, it actually has a PDF copy of this book. And before I get started, I can float this around the room if anyone's interested. Um, give you time to kind of type that in if, if you're going to do it. So I can always go back to it later on. Seems like everybody was typing has finished. So before we get started, got to pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> this presentation is brought to you by the good folks at Media Current. If you're going to Drupal, do Drupal right. That's the motto that we live by and die by. So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm not going to tell you more. Really, he summed, summed it up pretty much. This is just the actual specs. I do have a BFA from the College of Art and Design, Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, I've been working in the creative space for 12 years, six years in Drupal. And I started with 4.7, Drupal 4.7, more or less. Um, favorite bill or favorite site in Drupal to date is watch um, gmc.com, local Christian network. Um, TV show, they do all kinds of media. So that's a little bit about me. Um, th these are the, some of the assumptions I have when I created this, this presentation. I'm, I'm assuming you have some basic understanding of HTML and CSS. I'm assuming that you know you have a general idea of Drupal and Drupal theming. Um, we won't get into really basic basics of Drupal um, this evening. And I'm also assuming that you have some familiarity with the common standard web browsers, you know, i.e., Firefox, Chrome, Safari. Um, <coughs> now, these are good tools. Like I said, these all these books I have, I flow them around. If anyone's interested, you know, you can kind of thumb through it as I walk through this presentation. But these are all really good books to have if you're looking for. Uh, in-depth understanding of HTML5 and CSS3 and Drupal 7. If you pretty much run through these books, you, you pretty much be, a, be okay doing your things. Um, here's what we're going to do in the next four to five minutes. This is a wide topic. I mean, really, to be honest, you, won't, you can't pack it all in four to five minutes. But I'll do my best to skim through some of the high-level high points um, in this presentation. Um, HTML5 and CSS3 will affect the way that you build on the web and the way you experience the web. Um, you know, I, I'm going to tell you that there are some really big names interested in HTML5 and, and CSS3. Now, you know, I'm going to play a game. You, anyone play Guess Who? You know, Guess Who that for like I Spy? Anyone played that as a child? Hopefully, <laughs> normal <laughs> upbringing you've played. Uh, you know, guess who cares? Now, here's how it works. I'm going to I'm gonna display a face, and the first one, the first group of people who, you know, yells out the, the name or knows who it is, they get a T-shirt and some candy. Anybody like Snickers? And <laughs> Anybody like so, let me get that ready. I may have my helper guy over here pass it out. This is my son, Mseti. He's Mseti Taylor. His name is, initials IT. He's very technical. So he, begged he begged me to come, so I just brought him out. Okay. So let me get this ready. So you ready for the first slide? Anybody know that guy? All right, all right, all right. Sounds like this, this end of the room had it first. So I'm just going to. I'm going to pass that. Just, I'm just going to throw it out. <laughs> just going to throw it out. Please, 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 throw it out. There you go. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Next, I got some candy. And you guys are right. It's Facebook. So let me tell you why he's 
he is interested, or his group, his company is interested in, in HTML5. So first of all, just as he said during his time on stage, Taylor made it very clear that there, uh, that there are two key high-level focuses for Facebook in 2011. From a technology perspective, HTML5 <coughs> and, and mobile are actually, as he sees them, sees them that those are the most, those are the bo both very much related as well. So the, the point is that they're thinking, and this is the quote by the um, CTO the, um, down here, they are very interested in it, and, they, and as they see it over the next, the coming years, this is the most important thing that they, they could be doing, you know, in relation to the web and mobile. Anybody know that guy? No. Oh, you, you, did you get the shirt? I can't tell. Okay, uh-huh, okay. She's she, she the first one that, 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 uh, in the shirt. Okay, all right. Um, that's correct. Steve Jobs, and he's responsible for actually changing the way that we work and play on the web um, with his iPod and iPad and everything in between. Apple. I'm a, I'm a Mackie, so you know what? I had to put him in here. But this is what his, his uh, Apple had to say about it. Apple is one of the biggest supporters of HTML5, and Steve Jobs clearly thinks that this new standard is the future of the web. Hmm. To show why Flash is no longer necessary, <laughs> Apple <laughs> has launched HTML5 Showcase, right? Displaying what an HTML5 capable browser can do without the need for additional plugins. Now, when you download this presentation, I have links to the actual article so you can see it. So, so you won't say that I'm lying to you. We it's, it's going, yeah. <laughs> it's going away. I, and I don't think the iPad actually supports uh, Flash. No. no. And that's something. That's what that is. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Wow. All the way. All the way over there. All right. There you go. <laughs> Baseball on there. He's like, ready. I'm charged. That's right. Bill Gates. And he's the captain of, well, you know, he's semi-captain of Microsoft. He still runs the show. Um, and this is what his, his group had to say. The software giant shared the new interface with Win Rumors earlier this week in preparation for the improvement that the company is planning across its Windows Phone operating system. Microsoft is overhauling the user interface of Skydive. The new interface will include HTML5 version of its image viewer alongside a refreshed interface and view documents and files uploaded to the free service. <coughs> now, interesting, a coworker of mine sent me another clip clipping um, today to say that Windows 8 will be in uh, HTML5. I see these guys are serious about transitioning over into this new technology. <coughs> but I know this guy. We just know he's Google. Huh? Well, you, he's responsible. He's responsible for why we call it Web Page. Larry Page. There you go. And he said it. I'm gonna walk it over here. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Larry Page. See, all the big names that are coming out, guys. Google. It's co-founder Google. That's what he had to say. And this is, I had, I had a point for you. As a result, um, come August 1st of this year, Google Apps will no longer provide support for Firefox 3.5, IE7. <laughs> so, see, IE7? That's what you tell your clients. Google, I mean, they're not even going to support it. IE7 and so, FAR3 as the previous version of, of those browsers. At first, on all these browsers, Google features like Gmail, uh, Google Calendar, Google Talk, and Google Docs may not work properly, but eventually they may completely stop functioning. Stop completely. So I deal with IE7 at, um, on, on, at, on my job, and it's frustrating because clients, I, you know, it's got to support IE7. And, you know, this is something I'm going to use, say, well, you know, <laughs> the major, everybody's changing. You know, they're not going to be supporting it. Now, I'm hoping everybody should get this next one. Just, just hoping. Yeah. Anybody, know, anybody know who that is? All right. This is the, that's right. Oh, you can't get one. <laughs> he works with me. This is the coworker who sent me that article. Yes, the maker of Drupal. Okay, so this is what he had to say. And this directly from his blog. 
I believe in HTML5 enough that I want to make it one of the top five initiatives for Drupal 8 and switch Drupal default dot type from HTML, X HTML to HTML5. This is the fifth official Drupal 8 initiative after configuration management, design, web services, and multilingual initiatives. Now, this is very important. He said, HTML5 is about to rock our world. Direct quote, right? <laughs> That's why you should take note. This is, it's time to progressively move forward and give up the old H X HTML and old standards. So, the question is, you know, okay, well, what's so important? What's so special about HTML5? What does it have to offer? <coughs> well, if, you, if you, anyone has ever worked on the web, I, I'm going to give a comparison. I like to do these wild comparisons. Anybody ever moved? <laughs> right? Now, you put things in boxes, right? Now, you can kind of tell what's going on in this room, right? Just a little bit. Like, there's some, you know, you can tell there's some live animals here when we ship, and you can tell that that's from the U.S. Post Office, and, you know, these are, like, plug-ins, you know? <laughs> stay with me, stay with me. <laughs> All right? They have some labels that they're one-offs, but you really can't tell what's going on. Right. Can't tell what's going on. And this is how the search engines see. See, see a room. Now, this is how, with the help of HTML5 and, well, just HTML5 and CSS, this is how the web will be seen by, you know, Google and such. More semantic. Things like I objects are grouped together. It's more procedural. Everyone has a common language, so to speak. We got any pet lovers in here? Anybody have, have a dog? How many people have a dog? Show of hands. For this side of the room, as dogs. Well, I'm gonna put it in another way. Guess what? <laughs> this, is what is, this is what's happening right now, right? This is the big dog in the room. Okay, this guy gone yesterday, right? You just don't know. Huh? You just don't know it yet. You just don't know it. Just poor thing. Just not, not, not to you know anyone who has a food. You know, I have to say this. Yeah. I guess you've never you've never been around a chihuahua and a great dane. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I didn't say uh, HTML5 was scary. It's just bigger dog. <laughs> it's just a bigger dog. Okay. <laughs> All right. And this is a better blend. That's what that's what we're getting into. A better blend of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The browsers are becoming one big happy family now, more or less. I mean, IE, you know. <laughs> Ninety nine, I, I give credit where credit is due. It's, it's, it's doing pretty good. It's keeping up, but you know, I, I'm not a big fan of IE. Is is what it is. Um, so let's a little bit, and I got this directly from the HTML website. Of course, you can go there um, when you download these slides. So the web is semantic now, right? Semantic just means things are more logically grouped together. You have more support for RDF, A. You know, so like a say a way to structure data. Like it's like that warehouse example. It's a way to pick out data and share data across you know different platforms. Um, and that's what HTML5 is naturally set up to do, more or less. Right? Offline storage. This helps with um, you know with you know with, with with data. Like in other words, you can if you're on a mobile platform and you go through a tunnel or something, I'm just giving an example. You go through a tunnel and, you know, your website will still be, you know, persistent. It'll still be connected because you've downloaded a certain bit of data, a certain portion of it that you can, you know, continue to have a certain type of experience. And that's pretty much what, what HTML and this technology, HTML5, what it, it offers. Um, you know, device active. This is, you know... Helping devices communicate um, better, um, and 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 built in uh, like like video, video and audio. This is it's like before you had to do a plug in and get you know information and I mean you know get uh, have special other objects to, to to get your information. That's that's the thing in the past in HTML5. It's connectivity. It's the same the same thing. It's faster. Uh, better standards. You have more, um, more, you know. I would say ways to get data that was you had to do something com more complex 
to, to get the same type of interactivity and, and, and data push. So what that means is, you know, say goodbye, you know, to to cookies, you know, the cookie monster, battling cookies and and whatnot. You know, that's 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 now old technology with HTML5. Something multimedia support is in, in is inherent in HTML5. Um, and again, like I said, you can go on on the source. You can go on the website. This is the exact same wording that that's on on the site. N nothing tricky. With the event of HTML5, it supports SVG and Canvas. Basically, Flash is out of here. It's gone. You know, uh, it's native now. You can do a lot more with just a little bit of JavaScript. Now, HTML HTML5 itself does not draw you know graphics but it's it allows you have you have access into drawing graphics like you could put a tag on the page and you know use some JavaScript to kind of draw it and use the HTML5 uh, API to, to, to draw those objects increase performance um, you know this is XML HTTP request this is Ajax -y goodness it has better support for um, you know, pro progressive web experience for progressive web experience. So, and you know, one cool thing about HTML5 is it's support for um, web uh, web open font format. Basically, you can have very. It used to be you only have a certain set of fonts to actually use when you're doing a design. Now. With, with the support of the browser support of um, open fonts, you can pick all types of fonts like you would in the print world. I, I came from a print world initially, so fonts were fonts rule. That, that was your, your um, stock and trade, you know, that's your butter. So we're going to go through some, some elements, some uh, new HTML5 elements, right? And there's, there's a quite a bit of them. Uh, we won't go through all of them, but we're going to go through just kind of the bare minimum. Now, this is, again, this presentation is just geared to kind of touch over the, the, the high-level high points of HTML5. Um, I'm going to have to come back and do one that gets down to the nuts and bolts of it. But this is some of the, the latest um, elements. Like, you know, a div. Is, I don't know how many people have actually built a web page in here, but more, more or less, you use divs, and, yes. uh, you know, but really that's what it is, divs, and maybe you have a few address tags and anchor tags, but mainly there was nothing descriptive. You had to define it as you went along. There was no, quite, there was no standard. But that's, that's, that's no, no longer um, an issue in HTML5. Now, very interesting point, see, IE. Um, if later than IE9, you have to, you know, this is a, a script that you can put in as JavaScript. What it does is it, it creates the entities, or it create it allows uh, browsers, or IE, IE older um, versions of IE to display these these new elements, new HTML5 elements. So in that code, it it goes and and um, basically creates all those those entity or those elements for for you to use. So that's a good little tool to have. And I have a slide in the back to show you pretty much how to, how to use it or where to put it. So this is the old way. So again, you know, if you ever build a website, this is what you, this is a typical format. You know, you go through a div and you say, hey, you know, I have a header, you know, and I have a navigation, I have a left rail. You see, and they're all up to your, you know, you know, you can name it whatever, whatever you like. But if, if you were a search engine, if you were trying to you know, look at the site and and um, you know, let's say pick it apart or or see what's on it, it's very difficult for um, let's say a search engine to know for what type of content it is. I mean, they're good at finding it, but there's no standard, so you can label this anything you want. Well, those new elements now they have a standard. These are these are new page standards. There's a tag for the header. There's a tag for section and article. Now that's a I know that this is a particular interesting section because you know articles can have sections and sections can have articles 
I'll give you an easy way to kind of look at it, or how I look at it, anyway. Um, and you have the sidebar, you know, the floating. You know, everyone has to float the sidebar. But that's a side now. You can, well, that's one of the uses of the side. It's not all the uses, but that's one of the uses. And then you have a footer tag. So let's start with the first element, right? The dot type. Oh, the mighty, mighty dot type, right? Look at this. This is what you used to have to do. I mean, I've been doing this for a while, and I, you know what? I still have memorized it. I just, it just, uh, this is necessary because its predecessor is, it was built on, um, what was that, CGML or something like that? C, um, SGML. And you had to use, define it with a dot, with, this is DDT dot type definition. And you know that was there for XML and some other, other, other languages. But now, one thing you have to remember, really, that it's a dot type in this HTML. It's not really technically necessary. <laughs> technically, you don't even have to put it on. It's more forgiving. You know, I don't. You know, it, 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 if you ever built websites, one of the main thing is trying to get it to validate. It's very mm -hmm. unforgiving. You know. Um, now HTML it uses older HTML methods, meaning that you 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 technically don't even have to put quotes in your in um to in your in your uh, selector tags. You don't you don't have to do that anymore. It's more it's more yielding. It's more more about not necessarily validation, but it's more about semantic web and finding content. That's that's what new HTML5 is more or less geared towards. Not that you don't have to validate. It's just and for my opinion, it's not as important as making sure it's structured in a way that's readable. So, again, this is use case. This, you know, pretty much in a more formal way, the HTML syntax of HTML5 requires dot type to be specified to ensure that the browser renders the page <coughs> in standards mode. Now, if you if you know anything about browser testing, there's quirks mode, standards mode, there's different type of modes that depending on your dot type, it will render the page according to what it thinks, you know, it sees. And that's pretty much why that dot type is there. Um, but anyway, in, in new HTML5, the dot type mm -hmm. has no other purpose and is therefore op optional for XML documents, which in XML media type are also handled. Standards mode dot type. So you know this is pretty much I paraphrased this earlier. You know it's the dot type is case insensitive. HTML5 is not as um, it's not as uh, you know it's I say brittle, but that's not the right word. But it's not as strict. Good word. It's not as strict as as, um, <laughs> <laughs> as, as its uh, predecessor uh, XHTML. So let's talk about the header, the header element. Now, a header element, it just doesn't, you don't have to just use it for navigation purposes. It's any type of header. Um, typically, you want to use this to, um, for section headers or for like article headers. You, you want to, you know, on every page, there's a group of information like title, the name of that, the header, the, the section. And you put that inside of this header, and you put it inside of a header group. You know, for example, like we're ta I'm, I'm talking about this, but it could be used here, inside of here, and and on the in the rail and on the side. It doesn't have to be just used for navigation because you have a nav element, and that nav element is the same thing. So you want to when you use a header, you want to make sure, um, and this is good practice. You want to make sure you put in a header group, and you want to make sure you group your high-level headers together before you, you know, like it, it, before you, um, you know, move on to, to the other parts of the page. You want to make sure that this is, you know, clearly defined. So when you do, let's say, an outline of this page, it'll know exactly what things are corresponding to. That's pretty much what it's used for. Anybody, un anybody understand that concept? Please stop me if you have questions. You know. Or if, you, if I didn't quite explain it, and you want another explanation, this is a good example. You can go to that site, and uh, it's a good site to go to. Give you a good case. 
So again, it's another way. Idea of use is defining global page structure. That's the header, that's the navigation. Usually intended to contain section headings um, H1 through H6 and navigation. This could also be used as, as inside of the section containers to help identify section purpose or relevancy. That's what I was talking about. Everything is about re relevancy on the web or HTML5. Now the nav element. Interesting thing is that again, you know, we're talking about it here, but if you, you know, if you have a side menu, you know, if you have a side uh, navigation like a secondary nav, you use the same element here. And you can also, you know, append it with some type of class or ID. You know, it, per it takes that. It's just that this helps, you know, uh, someone looking at it or it helps these search engines really identify what's going on in so like I said we can I won't go through all of them but it's pretty much the same thing I'm going to kind of get through a bit of it um, same thing I paraphrased it for you it, you know you, you use navigation you can reuse it and is used for navigation on in the top or on the sides or for toolbar. Toolbar, excuse me. Now, section. It, here's the thing about section. This is how I think about it. Newspapers. Newspapers have sections, and they have articles. And you put articles inside sections. Simple, right? But you can you can do it the other way around. But it's still kind of a even even on their official documentation. It says one thing, but you know, in reality, people use, they use, you know, uses as they see fit. So you will, you will see mixes, you will see a mix out there on the web of how it's being used. But this is how I recommend using it, more or less. You know, create a section, a main section, and then put articles or content inside of that, that section. And that's pretty much how you, how you would use it. Um, you know, you could, group the, the, the entire page and then you know create a header inside of that, that section. And this is important this actually is an important you want to always associate a header to that section. And that this is one of the main purposes of the header. Because when you do an outline mode on, on this, you see that it'll describe what's in that section. The header describes what's in it. So say well here's and, and this is a link to the outliner. You just here you you take something like this and it'll let, it'll put it in like a bullet form list where you can see how things are associated with each other. So same thing with article. You know, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. It's the same thing. Um, you know, and these are just basic. You know, it's the same setup in the section is in the article and then the articles have a header and in theory you know I didn't put it because I would have ran out of space but you can move that up here too you want to describe the section you can just have a header inside of the article to describe that article as well that make sense okay so but you don't need that now this is very interesting again I, and I told you that Flash is going away, right? <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty much one of those things that is out of here. It's over, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's you know, now it's just maybe next year. I don't know, but uh, that's, that's pretty much what it is. So, you know, it. <laughs> this is a good example of how video works. Two video tag, the first two tend to be for Chrome in the Explorer. This one is, is pretty much native for you know other other, other browsers. Um, once these two guys catch up and you can just use this. It's really, really simple. It's not anything challenging. It gives you a UI and everything. I'll show you an example later. Uh -oh. Uh oh. Well, it's not. Oh well, no. It's I have the internet. Yeah. Let me. 
I want to show you a clean example. Yeah, well, it's taking a little while to come up. Yeah. Anyway, y'all can get this. I think this is it right here. Click on the wrong one. Well, you know, that's his life. Just when you want it to work, it's me. Yep. <laughs> Well, that's just because, no, I mean, it has nothing to do, it's just the server technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not, it, it loads like any other video. It's just because we're in a room and I'm trying to show you something. It's in. <laughs> 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 so. See, but these are, well, this is a wrapper. This is this technology. But it's pretty much, you know, similar. It'll, it'll pop up like, like this, the video. Um, this is just a way that you can wrap some type of uh, skin around it. Like that type of thing. Okay. Okay. Well, this lady's coming out of water. I thought y'all wanted to see that. Look at that. That's, well, wait a minute. I don't, I didn't watch her. Really. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's good. It's family friendly. But that's pretty much the, the idea. I'm sorry. I'm about to have a moment. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this is not the video I wanted anyway. It's another video, but it's not coming up. Huh. Anyway. Let me, let me pause that. Okay. Okay, all right, back to, so that's pretty much what it, what it is, and, and the side, it's, it's just like float, it's just like, a, excuse me, not float, but it's just like a sidebar, so I call it, hence a side, you, know, you use that just like you would use in the container, and you could use this as well as side, inside of, let's say, an article um, section, you know, it could be used as a sidebar, you know, not, not like a rail, but like a toolbar or something, you use that and you wrap it around that. So there are multiple purposes for that. Um, and that's kind of like, you know, again, kind of like, you know, everywhere you see blue, that could be a side too. It could be a, a side or something. That's pretty much, you know, you use it the same way. Nothing new there. Yes, sir? Styling? Yeah. Uh, no, you actually have to... It, yeah, it's like a span tag. It, it, in some cases, it may have a block. You know, it may be a block, like a div is a block. Um, you know, but you can just, um, in your CSS, you would go and define all the, the elements and put display block. And it'll make it a, function like a div, like any other normal div or HTML element. That's pretty much. Um, i say here. Yeah. So, you know, these are very simple, it's, you know, and they use the same way. It's like, um, it's, it's repetitive. Once you get the method, then it's easy to use it. It's the same way you would use, um, all, you, you know, before when you had to create a manual footer by calling it footer. It's the same thing. That's how it works. So, this is interesting. This is what... Mm -hmm is also replacing flash maybe not today but it you can do some pretty cool things with the canvas um, API um, you know, this is an example of this is a simple square and when you you know when you can go when you download the presentation click on that and give you an interactive sample but basically it's saying hey grab this ID then go grab the API you know, make it this color red and draw a box. And it, you know, think of this like um, image map. <coughs> you know, when you, when you draw an image map, it's the same, same coordinates in this JavaScript. But you, that's very simple, but you can do some very cool things with it. I'm going to show you something that you can do with it that's extremely um, 
useful. And you click on this guy here, that'll take you to the camp to, to the API and you can read up all about it. Very interesting. Now, has anybody ever seen this movie? Yeah. Huh? What happened? Huh? What? How? Shall we play a game? Yes, I will, How? I will play a game. Uh oh. Let me uh let me show you let me show you a game in here. I went ahead. There it is. All right. I'm gonna show you a game. Let me let me bring there you go. This thing is huge. Uh all right. Now this is all done in Canvas and HTML5. This is not the game. Um, I know you want to see something a little bit more fantastic. Than me. Um, I think this is because. All right, there you, there we go. All right, there we go. Oh no, this is not. That's it. Yeah, here you go. Oh yeah. Now, now you're doing it. Now we now we playing it. See now this is all done in HTML5 and using the canvas feature. Oh yeah, so you can make games. And son, this is this is what you want to do. So, <laughs> you, you, you asked me about it and I found it, okay? All right. we, we'll, we'll talk about it later. I'm sure he's gonna be doing a presentation on this a little bit later, so I'll get him prepped for him. Um let's go back to this presentation. <clears throat> Kind of cool. Okay, know how. I don't want to play anymore. So, CSS3, right? And it's magic. What's new? Well, not Transformers. It's not, but you remember the scene in Transformers, the old movie where the old, the uh, he was a stealth fighter, and the guy out in his prime got, you know, knocked down, and the guy gave him his power and he got souped up. Come on, you know you guys like Transformers. Everybody played with Transformers in here, right? No, <laughs> guess not. But that's, it's souped up. H CSS3 is more powerful, more robust, it's, you know, it's ready, it's taking charge. There's a lot you can do with it. This is just some of the properties. I didn't have enough screen space to put them all in there, but the point is, you know, you can do a lot more. Um, These are some of the new features. Uh, alpha or, or opacity. You, know, you can make things appear. I'll give you a good example. So that the RGB, and you can now specify how light or dark or how or, um, opaque or transparent you want. It's pretty cool. You know, you can, um, and that, that's native. You can make round the corners. I know I've, I've, I've seen on sites <laughs> round the corners. Now, it used to be a time where, you know what, you had to do that through images, you know, and it would. You spend a little time making something nice and cute, and then the client tell you, "Well, I want it smaller, and now I got to redo the image and everything." You know, but <laughs> you know, that's the thing of the past. It just resizes itself. Um, like I said, uh, you know, this this is a good example around the corners. This is because all the browsers are still, you know, they initially started this years ago. 2009 sometimes, um, trying to progressively get this supported. Now the browser is more supported, but they still have some of these lingering, you know, wet workarounds for their individual browsers. But eventually, you just end up using this once the once they you know, decommission or um, deprecate these um, these their 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 uh, proprietary tags, so to speak. Um, but that's this is a simple. This is how you would do it, border radius. And this guy here, this is IE again. You know, you, this is actually a downloaded JavaScript file, and you download it, and then it kind of, you know, makes IE function like a CSS3, you know, compliant browser. You know that IE, you know, it's, you know, they actually apologize. Did y'all did y'all know that? <laughs> that's bad when a company has to apologize for something they created. They they just didn't, didn't want to come along, but now they're getting the point. You know, <laughs> they're getting the point. What's that? When are they going to apologize yeah. for the music? I don't know. I, I'm just hoping something happens. You know, that's my devious mind. I, I want to just move to Mac or Linux world and just be happy. You know. But anyway, 
<laughs> um, shadows. You can create shadows now uh, around boxes. You don't have to do anything complex. I mean, there's a way to do it in images, but now, you know, why, why do that when you can use the browser to render it? So, Actually, I have a question. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your question? Is there a way to do Includes like uh, like JavaScript, like JavaScript. Yeah, I mean you could. You, I mean you would do JavaScript. I mean that's mainly a scripting type of language. I'm not sure. I don't think you can. Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, that's a long time ago before we started using Drupal. I think what uh, was it called? S S H S S H T M L. I remember that. Oh boy, Bing. Um, no, just better off just um, using like PHP or something like that to do it include it, to build it. Uh, um, pretty much. Hope that answers your question. We good? Okay. So, box shadow. This pretty much the same semantic, same syntax, and you do it. Um, and and again, you have to you know. These are in there specifically in case the browser that uh, that user is using does is not completely uh, CSS3 compliant or support. So you use the, these are other the typical browsers that people use that are compliant, and they have their own proprietary builds of the same feature. Is there a matrix of these uh, preferred other browser support that's not the situation? What, what you mean, like one page you can see everything? Um. Yes. 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 There. There. There's someone out there that has. I don't have an example for you today. So. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is. I mean, like Fire Firebug does this, but you normally put this in there. In in the event, it seems like there's four four things you're gonna put for the one thing you want. Well, yeah, this was a time when this wasn't supported as much. They're now converging. But I think it's probably number one at the top and put all the others. Yeah, a world experience. I mean, you just it's just one of those things like making sausage. I mean, you know, you got to pull them out. I think you're doing maybe these are the four messy acts over here. He says he says Dreamweaver. You know, I, I, if you use Dreamweaver and use it in the in all the massive all the all the other templates. I didn't know that. I don't use Dreamweaver. Five point five. If you're using CSS, you have to get five point five to get it to get that. Okay, well, I learned something new. Okay, so I, I don't use um, Dreamweaver. I used to a long time ago. Um, when it actually works with Drupal. It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, you, you I'm can, headed that way. You can mm -hmm. render a Drupal page live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you mean the preview? Yeah. Like, like, uh, wow. Yeah, it's, I didn't know that. It's basically like Firebug, except you can actually write through the files. Sweet. Firebug. Sweet. Well, I'm, I'm going to check that out. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there, there you go. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was sound sexy. Yeah, the shadow. Um, you can. Yeah, yeah. You can. Well, you can drop it down lower, and you can set the the, the off. Yeah, the offset from it. Um, this is just close up, and I think this is the the syntax. I mean, you know, X Y, and the blur, like the the amount of feather on the outside. This control the. This way, and this number will control it this way. So you can say, hey, I want this to be 10 pixels out, and it'll drop it. Kind of like that. Yeah, you use a transform option to do it. Um, like there's a, you could like transform the actual box, and then, you know, and you do it like that. There's a lot of tricks. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's, Look, at, look, this is the book for CSS3, okay? <laughs> I, I'm, and I can tell you, 
Um, I'll be honest with you. There's a lot. You know, like I said, 45 minutes is just not enough to really get into the nitty gritty, but it's a good give you overview. Is it true that almost every element you can now run transformation on or in fact make a uh, like on a video you can you can rotate a video. You can yes, yes. Text, you can rotate images. You can, so it's, it's pretty much wide open. So the transforms and the effects can be high contrast. Uh, absolutely. I'm going to show you animation in just a few. You want to see animation done completely in CSS? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. There you go. This is the at font, um, um, at, uh, font, at font face. You, know, you can put something like this in the browser and it's searchable. You just have to have the font available, and this is how you call it into action. It's pretty good. Um, it, it will give me a lot of joy when I have to <laughs> design for clients. Now that I can do it without using images and whatnot. Um, there you go. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you some examples. That's how you rotate it. All right. That's how you scale it. So you rotate it and scale it. It's pretty good. Show you some examples. Oh yeah, I'm about to pull out this um, browser again, so bear with me. Come on, man. Uh, let's just do the rockets. That's gotta get it done right now. Come on. <coughs> Um, very difficult. Well, this is one one example. For that, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to look for the rocket. Uh oh, that thing is blasting off. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> That's all done in CSS. And um, you know, you can click on this site, which is in the presentation, in it, and this is the I think this is this is the actual CSS right here. You can ease in and ease out. So you know, flash days number. You know, this is made, this is growing up just a little bit. I mean, it's it's getting there. I mean, there's some other cool things you can do. Let me let me go. Uh, I can. No. How well the CSS be degrade in browser? He doesn't. I mean, you know, you pretty much have to have a browser, a plan on that browser supporting. You can do some things with IE though. I mean, you know, like some mm -hmm. JavaScripting, filters and things like that to simulate it. But that's getting into more JavaScripting type of things. Have you worked at all with CSS three No, I haven't. I have not worked. I haven't created an animation. I just know it exists. I mean, I'm still by nature a designer guy, um, but. I do think that um, I, I think this may use a more complex. Well, I think there's a CSS3 pi Oh. That will add CSS3 support to all the old browsers. Yeah, I have. I don't know about that. I'm gonna have to remember that. One. Um, I'm gonna have. To, I do know that there is a. I have a link in here for a site that has all the equivalents, you know, so to speak. So if it's all in one place, it's, it's good. You know, this this is let me open up another window. <laughs> Ugh. Let me open up this window. And this is an animation. Right, this is like something you can do. Be with it. It's a, you know, dot type. It's a, you know, like a, like the map. Yeah, one of those, one of those things you can what, do. What, uh, 
what types of words are you using for words? Yeah, it's it's transition and transform, um, scale. If they use a, a combination of things. Like I know they used ease in here. Um, but anyway, this is the code. So you can down, you know, basically you can go here and you can you can play with it. There's quite a bit of tooling uh, to, to this that you can do. A lot you can do. And I have some other examples that you could just download it in the presentation. Um, <laughs> I always miss it. Anyway, this is ways you can make it more compatible. That IE guy, you know, he never works with me. So, this won't take long. Now, Drupal 7. Let me be honest with you guys. You know, do you want do you want the blue pill or you want the red pill? Because, <laughs> to be honest, Drupal, the truth is, Drupal 7 was not built for HTML5, right? That's why we said HTML, you know, in Drupal 8, that's the top priority. It doesn't take advantage. That doesn't mean you can't take advantage of it. It just means that you got to kind of go in and do some editing. But I'm going to show you. Two files you can edit that will get you further down the road, real easy. It's not as hard as what you think. Then I'm gonna show you the, uh, the blue pill. You know, the easy way. You know, another way you can live in the matrix. Um, <laughs> Template.php. See, I'm a guy. I like to roll my own, so yeah. I, you know, I don't mean that. No pun intended. No, no pun intended. I mean, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> that's not good. Um, <laughs> so basically, this is the pre-process in HTML and in Drupal 7. There's a pre-process for HTML because um, HTML.tpl.php is the container for the all the wrappers, so to speak. It's, it ha it houses the footer and the you know dot type. Best way to put it. In your template.php, what you do is you name your theme. Right, you put your name and your theme here. And this is you want to grab this during the process. You grab this, this um, you know, th this guy here, this template, and then you want to check to see if our RDF, which is native in um, Drupal Seven, I think they stripped stripped it out actually, maybe some type of security or something like that, but they stripped it out. And um, but if it, it does exist, then display this. If it, it doesn't exist, see else if else doesn't exist, then go ahead and display the simple dot type here, you know, what we talked about earlier. And make everything else black. Don't put any values in, in those variables. That makes sense. Okay. So now in the html.tpl.php, so what you do. See that that code, that sample code I showed you earlier. It's it's putting the dot type here. Just make sure that your dot type looks, you know, like this. And I think for most cases it actually does look like this. I think that the RDF line is being um, moved, which is like a bug in, in, in the thing. I think they moved it, but move it here, and I think it, it'll be compliant. It will validate. Also, put your um, JavaScript code. You know, your if if later than IE nine, put this code in to make it more HTML five compliant in IE. And you missed my the, the slide of the ways to make it compliant in IE. You just walked out on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> so always missed the good part. I told you I would give you a way to live in the matrix. Okay, I didn't lie to you. All these things like H, they have done the hard work. To make it HTML5 you know, compliant. My favorite, Omega. You know, I'm, I'm not a guy to follow trends, but I, I do like Omega, and I, in the close second for me, be the adaptive thing. This is more for panels, if you work with panels, to make it compliant. I haven't done an extensive test on this, I just know that it's um, 
and this is this will get you by. This will actually get you up and going. No word, no kuna no matata. No no words, right? Like the movie. Again, here are all these these books that um you know you can pick up. I recommend it. In my little packet, I actually have a PDF, you know, full book. It's there. Ask me how I got it. It's just there for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and this is, you know, pretty much. Thank you. Any questions? He has a question. Do you have any questions? Do you know anything about um, the? No, I do not have any more information about that. <laughs> What's it called? HTML5 underscore tools. Hmm. What I understand is it, it takes some of the default output from Drupal 4 and makes it more HTML5. Yeah, that's a big module because that's basically rewriting, you know, what Dries wants to do, I guess. No, no, I, I, I don't. So. Do you have a Drupal 8 book? Uh, no, I don't think it's out yet. Do you have a Drupal 7 book? <laughs> Drupal 8 I finished, is still. I finished 6 and 7 comes along. I'm thinking of skipping. It happens, it happens to all of us. We're like, man, I'm really good. I've mastered this hey, thing. And then, boom. Hey, you you like, only told me that Drupal 7 doesn't contain HTML. Or no, support HTML. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for Not natively. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it may be a long wait, but you can make it, you know, HTML5 compliant with some of, you know, special help from the thing. Them for sub theming, yeah. um, Omega actually has a complete theme that is HTML5 yeah. that you can use. One of their sub themes that's already built. Adaptive, yeah. And that, yeah. I'm sorry, he, he yeah. said something. But um, it's not too bad. Okay. Um, so. um, it might be worth mentioning there's a, a really good site for people trying to learn HTML5 and just kind of see examples. It's HTML5 for boilerplate.com. Oh, okay. Um, I was going to say it's a really good package. It comes with a fully documented version and an uncommented version. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good project to get started with. Yeah, um, I have one. Okay. And there's one also called HTML5 Doctor. It's a uh, Yes, yes, and rockstar.com, I have that in the list of, um, on this slide here, if you download, if you download this, I'm going to put this back up, I'm going to put this slide back up, because in that, in that, uh, in this download here, I have a list of, I mean, it's got to be at least 20 sites, and that's one of them, it's at the top of the list, advanced, I don't have that, yours in there, but, um, there's a list of 20 just sites that it'll make you an expert. Oh, not necessarily overnight, but it'll, it'll make you pretty capable. 